Good morning! Today we're going to have a look at my new favorite media player. It's a free media and review player that lets you draw, annotate, share notes with clients, uh, display different color space transforms, view render passes and stencil layers, uh, view crop modes and so much more. So let's have a look. So this is not sponsored in any way, but I found this tool a few months ago and I've been using it almost every day since then. And it's so awesome, so I just have to share it with you guys. First out, we have to download it. Head over to the link I've supplied down in the description. It's made by a company called F-Track, which also makes very cool project and shot managing tools. Then you will also need this OCIO file, which contains a bunch of valuable color spaces that uh, you can use not only in uh, CineSync, but also in like Unreal Engine and Blender and Nuke. So I suggest having this config file locally in your computer, so you can use it in different softwares. It's available for free on uh, GitHub, so I'll uh, leave a link to that file down in the video description as well. So like most media players, you just drag and drop your file into the window here. You can have a look at the video. So here we are in CineSync. This is how the interface looks. It's a very clean and minimalistic interface. By using the keyboard keys J, K and L, you play, stop, reverse and go forward in time. So you can scrub through using these three keys. So this shot was actually rendered from Blackmagic Fusion using the Aces CG color space. So we're going to view that color space here in CineSync. You can find these settings up here in the toolbar. and go to color grading. Here you can locate the uh, OCIO uh, color space config file that you downloaded from GitHub. I have a duplicate here, so ignore the duplicate. Sorry about that. Now you will have access to the whole library of uh, color spaces. So if you scroll down here to input color space, here you can see we have Aces, Blackmagic Film, Canon Log, DaVinci Intermediate, Linear, S-Log and so much more. Very handy. So we're going to apply the Aces CG, which I uh, used for my clip here, rendered from Fusion. And now you can see how it actually looks. This is the way it's supposed to look, with the correct gamma curve and color space. So let's say that you only want to view a specific part of the video file. You can do that by hitting I and O for in and out. Kind of the same way you do in uh, DaVinci Resolve, using I and O for in and out points. And you clear the in and out points using C for clear. Here we have a live action plate I shot using my Sony F55 Cine Alta cinema camera. So I want to apply the correct color space here too. So I'll go down to inter input color space and then apply the S log uh, S gamma uh, Cine, which I used uh, in the camera. As you can see, this shot was actually underexposed. So what you can do, if you want to preview how the color grade will look, you can do a live color grade here. So we can go up to tools and then color grading. Also, alt plus G is the shortcut for this. So we can bring up the gamma using the gamma slider here to increase the shadows a bit. And it's not like applied to the video, so don't worry about ruining anything here. So next up is the masking feature. You enable this by hitting Ctrl plus M. Here you can select a mask. So this was shot in 16x9. But let's say for example that we want to preview how this would look in a 2.39 aspect ratio. We, well you can do this here. You can also lower the opacity of the mask. You can align it to the center or you can adjust it by raising it up and down if you uh, shot this in 16x9 obviously. Uh, otherwise you couldn't do this. Also a very cool and handy feature to have, just to preview uh, quick dailies like this. So we're back at the CG render. Down here you can view the time code or the frames. And I don't know if you noticed, but you can also, when I viewed the uh, Sony F55 clip, I could also see the time the clip was shot, so it was shot uh, quarter past four, I believe, in the afternoon. Next up is a very important feature for me, as I do a lot of CG renders. To demonstrate this feature, I'm going to import an EXR image sequence. So this EXR sequence has two layers. 
It has both the beauty pass and then it also has a shadow catcher for the ground catching the shadows of the character. If you press alt and then left arrow or right arrow you can view the different render layers here. You can also view the individual channels by hitting shift uh, A, R, G or B for alpha, red, green or blue. So now we are back at the live action footage but you can use this feature for any clip you want. So here you have color meter. You access this by hitting Alt plus M. So not to confuse it with Control plus M, but Alt plus M. In here you can use a color picker to view the uh, image values or uh, pick a hex code, which is automatically copied to your clipboard uh, if you want to use a specific color from the clip. Also a very handy feature I use very often. Probably the most notable feature though, is the review function. This lets you annotate, draw and share notes with your clients or colleagues. So here we have a clip and let's say for example that I want to share an annotation with my client. I access the annotation tools down here. So if you press and hold, you have a whole menu of things you can select. So let's select the circle for example and draw a circle around this number here. So let's say that this number is wrong and we want to uh, annotate that this is the wrong price. So the price should be 2.99 here instead, for example. Now this will only be viewed at that current frame. So if you play this back, you won't see anything. But if you hit control and then left arrow, you will be taken to the next annotation or the previous annotation by hitting control and then left or right on your keyboard. So let's do another one. We can select a brush, increase the brush size here. And let's say for example that I'm a bit confused as to what this blue patch is on the character's body. So let's draw a circle here and a question mark. And as previously said, this will only be visible when I actually pause on this frame. You can access uh, these frames quickly by hitting control and left and right on your keyboard. Now the super cool part is that you can save this review. So you can uh, save it up here, save review as. And then preferably place this file in the same folder as your video file is located. So if you share the media file, you can also share this file. You can see here that it's a very small file, only taking up a few kilobytes on your hard drive. So if you send this file over to your client, for example, and your client has the same uh, folder with the same media files, uh, the client can then simply double click this file and open up your notes here and preview what you have annotated or drawn. If you want to send this over to someone who doesn't have the CineSync player, you can of course also go up here to annotations and then export all the notes to a PDF, uh, including the timecode. And it will open in this folder and you will get both uh, high res uh, prints uh, with the notes as images if you want to send only those. But you will also get a PDF with all of the notes, uh, including the time codes here, and the shot name and the frame number. But perhaps you want to add more description to this, to clarify more what this is about. You can simply go down to this document looking icon, and here you will find the notes for the movie and for the individual frames that you have annotated. So you can type in here, for example, this number is incorrect, and should, and should be updated to match the latest script revision. And then if you export this once again, you will now see that this uh, description has been added to the PDF. And of course we have like arrows and uh, lines and squares and circles and stuff. You can change the colors. You can do so much uh, using these annotation tools to really point out and clarify what you want to say with your feedback 
or uh, like brainstorming new ideas uh, that you can improve on and so on. Yeah, I think you get the point here. Then we also have this very handy zoom feature. So if you select this magnifying glass, you can simply draw a box and it will zoom in the image on this box. So let's say for example this shady looking dodo here we want to zoom into and have a closer look at. You can simply draw a box around it and it will zoom into the dodo here. The last feature I want to show today is a feature that lets you compare images. So here for example we have a version 1 of this render where I initially thought that the depth of field was looking kind of weird. So I did a, another render pass where I fixed the depth of field. So you can import both image sequences to CineSync. Then you can hit Alt plus C and it will bring up the compare window. At first the images will be compared side by side in a horizontal fashion. Uh, you can of course view the uh, videos uh, in this way. And then let's enable this. But I prefer using a wipe instead. So you can change the uh, mode down here. So let's change it from horizontal to a wipe. And by holding control you can move the slider back and forth. So you can see the before and after on these two files. And yes, indeed, the depth of field was improved. You can also rotate the uh, wipe angle, view the difference between the layers, so kind of like a difference mat, and uh, yeah, do a vertical and so much more. I'm kind of impressed at how many actually useful features uh, they have put into this free media and review player. There are of course other alternatives to this, uh, and I think you should choose whatever fits you. Uh, but for me, I've used DJV up until now. I don't really know why, but I've had like this playback issues with MP4s, whereas CineSync has just played all media files I've thrown at it without any dropped frames. And I can't really say the same about DJV or VLC, unfortunately. So I highly recommend this software. And it's free, which is uh, very cool, and I like free software, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and um, I have uh, so many more tutorials coming. Uh, I've been super busy working on a feature film, but uh, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, I promise I will try to push out as many tutorials as I can. I read all the comments, and I know that you you are asking for more tutorials, uh, specifically in Unreal Engine and Natron. So I will uh, try to focus on that and uh, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.